This video will be a brief introduction to perforation, what it is, and some theoretical results. So let's start by what appears to be creating another one of my schematics of the pore space. So imagine I have these points that could be the pores, but notice that I'm not explicitly drawing them this time because I'm going to explain percolation theory in a theoretical sense. So imagine these are lattice sites. Yes, it is going to represent a porous medium where these are real pores, but just imagine them as sites. And now what I do is at random, I'm going to fill one of the links between the sites like this. So this is a random process, okay? Then I do it again, I have a random number generator and I fill another link. Okay, I can do another one and I can keep doing this process and continue to do it. But what you're going to find is eventually as you keep doing this, things begin to connect, right? So we've got here, these are connected together as I'm randomly filling. And there will come a point when I filled sufficiently and uh, say this is an example where now I'm connected across the system. So from left to right, I can follow a path that is filled. So I can define now some terms. I can define P, which is the percolation probability. And what is that? That is the fraction of links filled. Sometimes instead of the word link, you can call them bonds. And of course, when we talk about porous media, that's filling threads, isn't it? PC is the percolation threshold. And that's the filling fraction, the percolation probability, at which you first get a connected path. So this is when you first get a connected path. Okay. In this particular example, if it's a square lattice, the percolation threshold is one half. Now you might say, is it a half? Uh, it doesn't look like a half on the, uh, this diagram. And anyway, it's random. You know, what happens if just by lack, you go fill, 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 and you connect across, of course. What this means is that if I had essentially an infinite size lattice, then you might imagine that sort of the randomness in the end gives you something statistically homogeneous. And with an infinite size lattice, you would find that the percolation threshold is in fact exactly a half. If it's a very large lattice, it's going to be very close to a half with any realization of re random numbers. So for a square lattice, it's about a half. Obviously, we're considering three-dimensional flow and connectivity. So in three dimensions, it's going to be less than that if you've got extra connectivity. So pores that are very well connected, have lots of throats to connect to other pores, that percolation threshold is going to be less than a half, maybe a third or a quarter. If you have a much more poorly connected network, this percolation threshold could be potentially even larger. Okay. Well, as I've been talking, I've made it very clear that I'm describing a flow process, a displacement process. So what does this pro process represent? Well, the random filling of throats described in a previous video, this is an imbibition process where the filling here is by snap-on. So an imbibition process is where the blue represents water that fills throats. Now, of course, you might say, but they, you don't fill them randomly. You fill them in order of size. You fill the smallest first, then the next smallest, and so on. That's correct. But if you have a statistically homogeneous rock, by which I mean there's a distribution of throats and they're all different sizes, but you don't have all the small ones clumped in one place and all the big ones, they're randomly distributed in space, then this is indeed a percolation type process. 
So imbibition is percolation-like or ordinary percolation, because I'm going to distinguish it from something else in just a moment. So this is ordinary percolation. Now you might say, yeah, but that's still not quite right because you haven't represented the pores here, and it's true there's also pore filling. So it's a little bit more subtle than that. But as a you know, as a physicist, just giving a quick overview, imbibition fundamentally is a percolation-like process, and the key thing, the key reason. And the key consequence for flow is that when we're connected from one end to the next, now the water can flow at least through the centres of the throats, and it will have filled some of the pores, as we know. So it's connected through the centre of the throats, but it's also filled other regions here that are not connected. So the water saturation is quite high. It's filled regions of the pore space, but the flow through this region of the network is going to be very small, because the only way water can flow is through wetting layers, and these are thin layers confined within the corners of the pore space. And in a later video, we're going to sort of quantify what that uh, flow conductance would be, but I think intuitively you can see it's going to be small. So what's the other process that we've looked at? Well, let's reproduce exactly the same pattern here. but in a different colour. OK, so this is the same grid, maybe not exactly the same, but we're, we're trying to do it. Now let's consider drainage. Drainage we described as an invasion percolation process. Now, how does that differ from this, quote, ordinary percolation. Well, if instead, you know, we did the random filling, but we said we were only allowed to fill regions that were connected to the inlet. So, for instance, we couldn't do a random filling here or here because that's not correct, connected to the inlet. Also in drainage, it seems to be the opposite. We're not filling in order of size from the smallest upwards. We're going from the largest downwards. But if we represent an invasion percolation process, then the only elements that we would fill if we were to have the same random number generator that favoured these particular ones to be filled, so we can do an analogy, would be it would fill just this region. OK, and it would fill this one because this is technically at the inlet. So what you'd notice here is that if we had an in invasion percolation process, where we fill, again, apparently at random, but it is, it is in order of size, but we're filling in order of size, but you have to be connected from the inlet because the non-wetting phase has to be connected, not just up here in the middle. We have a similar pattern, it's percolation-like, but we don't fill these regions. We don't fill anything that's disconnected. So invasion percolation is a drainage process, right? when a non-wetting phase displaces a wetting phase. And imbibition with snap-off, that's percolation. Drainage with what we call piston-like advance, because you go through the centres of the pore space like a piston, OK? gives you invasion percolation. Okay, so what does this mean now in terms of flow? The flow conductance in these two cases, at least in terms of the connectivity, is similar. You might say, oh no, but it's different because this is the widest regions, and these are the narrowest regions, and, and what about the pores? Okay, let's pause that, okay? But what do we see in terms of this pattern? This has the same topology, the same connectivity, but the saturation, the amount, or at least the fraction of the links I filled, is less because I don't consider this region here. So what you find in an imbibition process, or indeed a percolation process, is you have to fill quite a lot of the pore space with the fluid, in this case the wetting fluid, before it's connected through the centres of the pores and throats. And so before you can get significant flow. Essentially, the flow is held back as it fills at random, but it already gets itself connected. Right? It's like having a road network where you sort of open roads at random, 
but you can't drive across the city until the roads actually connect across. In invasion percolation, it's though you're as though you're opening the roads across a city, but you're doing it from one end of the city to the next, so your pathway is connected. can have dead ends, and of course, if this is a drainage process, you might say, well, this is even better because actually you're filling the widest regions. So this not only is it a lower saturation in terms of not having these isolated regions, it's also preferentially the largest regions, whereas in imbibition, it's preferentially the smallest. So this is going to have a big consequence when we're looking at flow. In an imbibition process, essentially the wetting phase is held back, doesn't get well connected. In a drainage process, it gets connected without these disconnected regions. Furthermore, and now we're going to get a little bit into percolation theory, but I don't want to dwell on it because it's a fascinating subject, um, but can immediately become rather obscure is that if we move towards an infinite size lattice, a bigger and bigger and bigger lattice, or a bigger and bigger piece of rock, and that's obviously what we're interested in, turns out that the fraction of filling in the connected path of the percolation threshold is actually an infinitesimal fraction of the total amount that's filled. So the amount that we fill to create a, a connected path tends to a zero or a small fraction as we look at a larger and larger system. So this is quite extreme in terms of its behaviour. Obviously, filling does continue to proceed. We ha don't stop at this point. We continue to fill more elements and we get better connectivity and everything sort of will eventually join up in exactly the same way as it would in a, in a, a primary drainage process. Okay, so eventually we do get better and better connectivity. I'm not, I'm not denying that. Um, but certainly at the threshold to sort of get things going, there's a big difference. And that difference does retain even beyond the percolation threshold um, because they will still, in theory, be disconnected regions here until we're getting to a saturation of almost one. And obviously when we get a saturation of one, then everything is flowing, so there's going to be no difference between these two pictures. Okay, so I'll finish there. But later what we'll do is we'll begin to quantify in terms of equations and conductance, what this really means in terms of flow. But at the moment, the key concept is this. We have percolation, which we can call ordinary percolation, which is the random filling or filling in order of size, but spatially random. And that's a good model of imbibition governed principally by snap-off. We can have invasion percolation, where you only invade a connected path from the inlet. And that's a good model of drainage with piston-like advance. And this has big consequences for flow. This basically gives you connection and good connectivity, good flow, at a relatively low saturation of the phase that's invading. This, on the other hand, holds back the phase that's invading and has a lower flow. Thank you very much.